How to create your Amazon seller account step by step. What's happening guys, I'm Dan Rogers and I've been selling on Amazon in North America and Europe for a good few years now. And having gone through verification in both, what I wanted to do was compress one tutorial for you that's gonna cover everything you need to know about signing up for your Seller Central accounts. Also, things have changed recently with Amazon sign up. So this is keeping it up to date so you can skip the headache and pain of getting it wrong and just have one outline to follow and in the spirit of transparency and just to let you know this is a worthwhile venture selling on Amazon what I'm going to do is actually show you the account I have linked to this phone currently I'll bring it up there so I wonder if you guys can see this but you should be able to see it you can see this is refreshed refreshing in real time and then you can see here so we've done about eighteen hundred dollars in sales today 52 sales and 0% change from the last seven days. It's actually the same. You can see we've averaged about between two and two and a half thousand per day there. So that's just to give you an idea. And this is my phone, it's etc. So with that out of the way, let's get going with this. Now I'm gonna reference a lot of material in this one. So I'm gonna drop all the links in the description for you so it's nice and easy, you can check them out there. I did take this very seriously because when I began selling, I went through three grueling months of verification back and forth until I could actually sell and it was really a tough process. So if you know someone in that position, please share this video with them. Let's get this in front of the right people. So step number one is to choose your marketplace. Now I wanted to remind you about this. If you're new to FBA, when you use fulfillment by Amazon FBA to fulfill orders, your personal location does not matter. So don't let that hold you back or determine which market you actually sell in. Because in all likelihood, your inventory is gonna go from your manufacturer to Amazon's fulfillment center. You're not even gonna see it most of the time. So currently there are actually 16 Amazon marketplaces. We have the USA, we have UK, we have Germany, France, Canada, Japan, India, Italy, Spain, Mexico, Brazil, China, Australia, the UAE, Singapore, and Netherlands. And on top of that, there's another three referenced here, as you can see, which are KR, TH, and TW, being Korea, Thailand, and Taiwan. Now those are listed, but they don't seem to have a fully functional site yet. Now when signing up, there are unified accounts. And this means that when you sign up, you actually sign up for a group of these marketplaces we just mentioned, not just one of them. And then you can access each one of those individual marketplaces from one dashboard. So for example, the North American Unified account holds the USA, Canada, and Mexico, while the European Unified account holds the UK, Germany, France, Italy, and Spain. And I expect Netherlands to actually be added to that very soon as well. So again, those are one seller central dashboard, and you can access all of those individual markets from the one dashboard. So overall, the choice is yours on this but I personally make more from North America than Europe. And you can see, even if we use Prime Day as an example here, the US is just leaps and bounds ahead of the other markets in terms of pure sales volume. If a product sells 10 times a day in the UK, it might sell 30 times a day in the US. And yes, US does have more competition, but that still remains my recommendation. If I was signing up and starting today, I would start with a North American unified account. And step number two is to choose your entity type. This means how are you applying to Amazon? What type of entity are you? Now the choice to sell as an individual or a company actually lies with those who live in Amazon accepted countries. And let me explain what I mean. Each Amazon region has a list of accepted seller registration countries and any person or business within that accepted country can actually sign up for an account and sell on Amazon. Each region also has a different list of supported currencies, and this determines whether Amazon can disperse your payments from the sales you make 
to your business's bank account in the currency that you want to receive those funds in. So in short, depending on where you live is going to limit your options here. It's either going to give you the ability to sign up as an individual or company, or it may limit you to only being able to sign up as a company. I'm not going to delve too deep into all of these nooks and crannies because as you can probably tell the situations are diverse but in a nutshell here's what you want to do check if your country is accepted any person or business registered in one of the following countries can sign up for an account here's the list for north america and here is the list for europe Now, if your country is mentioned there, then what it means for that marketplace is that you have the ability to choose to sign up as an individual or as a company. But if it is not there, then what you're going to need to do is set up a company in an accepted country. It's totally doable. This is actually how I eventually got my start when I was still setting up from South Africa. I had tons of problems. I ended up setting up all different companies, but it does work. So it is doable. That is an option. Now, pro tip here, while you're at it, you may as well check both the European and North American accepted lists as we just went through and set up in a country accepted by both. That way, if in the future you want to expand and sell on a different marketplace, you want to sell on all of them, your company's country is accepted by all of them already. So secondly here, whether your country is accepted or not, putting that aside, something else you need to check is whether or not the bank account or the proposed bank account you're going to use, whether or not that bank account's currency is going to be supported by Amazon. In other words, can Amazon pay you your earnings in your home currency? So here is the list for North America. And here is the list for Europe. Now, if your country and currency is there, then great. Then most of those cases, Amazon's actually going to be able to directly pay you your earnings out. If not, then you need to bolt on an extra service, an online payment service, something like World First or Payoneer. And that type of service is going to allow you to receive practically any currency like USD, GBP, Euros, etc. And then convert it within this tool and then disperse it from there to your home country or to your actual bank account in that currency. Now, the second pro tip here is sometimes it's actually worth doing that anyway. You can get a better currency conversion rate using something like World First, where you determine when that currency is converted and at what rate. This is something I do. So if you're already selling, then that's something you can do just to boost that income further or just kind of ensure that you're not losing a lot on that foreign exchange. Now, in terms of Payoneer or World First or any of these payment solutions, remember they offer individual and business accounts and you need to choose the correct one in accordance with how you're going to sell. If you're running a company, you need to choose their business account. If you're doing this as an individual, you need to choose their individual or personal account. And here's one more option on the currency saga. This is actually a newer option, but if your currency is listed on this page over here, which is actually the same between North America and Europe, by the way, then you have the option to use something called HyperWallet. And this is a currency conversion service that Amazon is currently integrating to make this easier for international sellers. Now you can see the instructions below here, but in your seller central account, what you want to do is go into the settings and then you're going to choose your country in the bank location drop down. And it's going to allow you to sign up for HyperWallet and you just continue the process from there. So I know we haven't actually got into the sign up, but it's really important to understand the groundwork here. But at this point, you should be clear on where you wish to sell your entity types or so individual or company, as well as your currency support and what you might need to do there. Now it's best practice to get all of this set up before moving on to step three and everything's ready to input and, and just be streamlined. So step number three, sign up link. So where do I actually sign up? There's two really easy places where you can start sign up from. The fastest way is to just type in services.amazon.com or 
services.amazon.co.uk depending on where you want to actually sign up for. You can find those links in the description below as well. But once you're on the page, as you can see here, you can then just hit start selling from any one of these links. The other way to sign up is you can simply actually go to the bottom of amazon.com, the home page of amazon.com or .co.uk, and you'll find a section that says make money with us. And under that, you can find sell on Amazon. That link is going to take you to that same location. Now at this point, you do need to know that there are two types of accounts. You can sell as an individual or as a professional. And so you can have an individual seller account or you can have a professional seller account. Now with the individual seller account, you don't have to pay a monthly fee of $39.99, but you pay a closing fee of $0.99 cents per unit you sell. On the other hand, with the professional seller account, you do not pay that $0.99 cents per unit you sell, but you pay the $39.99 per month. So in effect, the more you sell, the cheaper the professional seller account actually becomes. The professional account is what I recommend. I actually really would recommend you stay clear of the individual seller account for so many reasons. The first of which is that as soon as you're selling 40 or more units a month, the individual seller account becomes more expensive. The second reason is that your seller central account features are very limited with an individual account as opposed to the pro account. And thirdly, there are certain disadvantages like with the buy box to individual accounts. So overall, just go with the professional selling account. Now, once you click on start selling here, this actually begins the setup of a professional account. And you're gonna to wanna to click on create new account at the bottom here. Then you wanna enter a name, an email address, and a password here. I recommend using a dedicated email address for this, just for this Amazon account. Now you're going to need to receive an OTP to that email that you've just put in. So that's gonna come through. Try use that relatively quickly. If it does time out, you can of course just resend that. But once that's cleared, you can click on next. Step number four is you're gonna input all your details. Now here, you're gonna to wanna to choose your business's location. So whether you have an incorporated business, something like a US LLC or a UK limited company, any other type of company, or if you're trading as a sole proprietor, also called a sole trader, or just you as an individual, you still want to select here where is that business based? Where does that business operate from? Next here, you're going to want to choose your business's type. And here, most of you are going to choose privately owned business if you have an LLC or a limited company or the like. Any of you starting as individuals, you're going to sell as yourself you're going to choose none, I am an individual. If you're signing up as an individual here, you wanna input your name exactly as it is on your passport or ID document. Because remember, you may have to upload that document later and you want them to match exactly. Those of you starting with companies here, LLCs, limiteds, etc., you're gonna to wanna to input the registered company name here. That is the name on top of the legal document you have. For example, the certificate of incorporation. Now an easy way to spot it is it's going to end with a company suffix like LLC or limited. So it could be, for example, click the like button LLC. Once that's done, you can agree and continue. So from here, I actually continued the process as a company because between individual and company, the company process is going to be more complex. But the process for individuals should be simpler and it should be very similar. Now on the following page, you need to input the company registration number. Again, this is something you're gonna find on that legal document. Make sure you double check it, this needs to be accurate. At this point, you're gonna enter your business's registered address. Now individuals can just put in their personal address. Those who run companies are going to input their company's address. Now remember, your company address might still be your personal address, that's fine, but it is the registered address, meaning it is the address again on your legal documents. I wanna give you the third pro tip here. Take a very good look at your bank statement that you would use for verification. Now obviously that needs to be a bank statement in the name of the entity that you're applying as, so you or your company. 
but take a very good look at the address on that statement and you actually want to input the address here exactly as it is on that bank statement down to the letter. It needs to line up absolutely perfectly. At this point you want to input a telephone number so this can just be your phone number because you're a primary contact person for this business. You'll see there there is a drop down for different countries. Now if at this point you don't actually have a specific telephone number for a certain country and that's what you need. What you can also do is use Skype phone numbers or other online phone number services. Next yeah, we're going to choose a method of verification. SMS works really well for cell phones and the call feature is actually really good for instances where you can't receive text. For example, some Skype phone numbers can't actually receive SMSs, so they will actually call you. Then you're going to click on send SMS. It's going to bring up a box where you can input that OTP, input it and then it should say verification successfully completed. Now at this point you want to input your primary contact person's name. That does not have to be you but you want to put it in exactly as on that person's ID document. We are going to upload the primary contact person's ID doc later so it needs to match exactly. Pro tip number four. I have had situations with sellers where they run into a real brick wall here because they do not possess an ID document that is in an accepted country. Now if you do run into this problem you need to consider if you know someone who has that ID document in an accepted country that you need. They could become your primary contact person and it's going to help you get through this part of the verification process. Now we can click on next. Now you need to choose the country of citizenship for that primary contact person from the drop down. Now remember those drop downs are not universal so I'm going to scroll through them slowly for you now so you know exactly what is in these lists as of March 2020. You need to have a primary contact person with citizenship or government issued ID in one of these countries. Now input the country of birth as well as the date of birth. Choose the proof of ID document. This is often going to be passport and then input the document's number and the date of expiry. Then you're going to choose the country of issue from this list here and at the bottom choose whether this contact person is the beneficial owner or a legal representative of this business. Then you need to state whether or not you've added all the beneficial owners and finally you're going to click save. Now on this screen you can select which marketplaces you wish to sell in. You probably already know at this point where you wish to sell so select that. I would avoid unnecessarily adding more here. You can always do that later. Now at this time it appears Amazon's actually running a promo where you can register for North America, Europe and Japan all at once for $39.99 which is a great deal but remember that could change. So once selected you want to click on next. Now this page is where you want to input your billing info. You can input your card details and billing address. Now Amazon accepts Amex, Visa and MasterCards but do not accept online payments like PayPal. So you need to use one of the major cards here. It can be a debit card or a credit card. This is actually also where your Amazon accounting begins because since this account and paying for this account is a business expense, the business should be paying for it. Now that might be your personal card if you're running this as an individual, but it should be your company's debit or credit card if you're running this as a company. Now it doesn't make a huge difference at this point. You can do either and always change it later, but it is good to start thinking that way that your company should be paying for its expenses. You should not be paying for your company's expenses. So a quick note here, this card will be charged for the first month or until you make sales. But in the future, what's quite nice is once you have a balance from sales, this amount that you're going to come off the balance that you have in your seller central account. So it will no longer charge this card. It's just going to come off of your balance. So once that's done, we can click on next. Here, we're going to want to input our store information. Now, the first thing we want to do here is choose our store name. And a lot of people get really confused about the store name. But really, it's just a name shown on your listings. And you may well have seen it like this. Sold by store name 
and fulfilled by Amazon or sold by smash the like button and fulfilled by Amazon. It's also near the top of your listings, but it can be changed at any time and there's no real reason to stress about this. But I did want to give you pro tip number five here. If you already have a brand name in mind, then making the store name the same as your brand name is a great way to go. Think of it like this. If you see Nike products sold by or under the Nike store, that only adds credibility. It's a good cohesive whole. It's a good way to brand. So if you do have a brand name, that's the way I would do this. Additionally, store names can only be taken once, so it's really subject to availability. So if you have a specific brand name that you're in love with and that's going to be on, you know, pretty much most of your first products, then why not grab that while it's available and sell your products beneath that? And that brand name is on your products and on your store. Now I'm going to throw in pro tip number six here because if your brand name is taken in lowercase, try it in uppercase because the availability is case sensitive. In other words, if it's taken in all uppercase, you can probably still get it in all lowercase. Now, if you don't have your brand name yet, what you can do is check out my video in the description on exactly how to create your Amazon brand name. This is a really easy but fun process as well. So I think you'll enjoy it and then you will have something really solid to not only put on your products and potentially trademark one day, but also to fill in here as your store name. But do not let the store name hold you up. You can always adapt this later. Put something in here for now. Remember, you can always change this. Even if you end up selling multiple private label brands under this one store, then you can change that store name. So it's a different kind of cohesive hold to these different brands. You can do that later. For now, you just need something in here. Now for the next questions here, it really actually depends on how you're looking to sell on Amazon. Are you doing arbitrage? Are you doing private label? Now I focus entirely on private label, so that's what I'm going to focus on and that's the way I'm going to approach these next questions. I'm going to select yes for do you have UPCs for all your products. Now I wanted to give you pro tip number seven here. I highly recommend that you use GS1 UPC codes to add products to Amazon, specifically if you're doing private label final products. If you're doing arbitrage or things like that, then GS1 codes, which are more expensive, might not make sense. But overall, I really recommend for private labelers, you guys use GS1 UPC codes. I will put a link to my GS1 video in the description as well if you want to learn more about that and how to get those codes. And for the next question, I would also select yes here for are you the manufacturer or brand owner? Because as a private labeler, you will be the brand owner. Now, if you do select that, it's going to actually open up the next question, which is do you have the trademark for those branded products? Now, if you do, you want to say yes here because you're going to be able to streamline into brand registry already. If not, then you're going to say no here. And pro tip number eight, I think. So getting your trademark is a huge advantage. Don't put off selling because you don't have a trademark, but it's definitely something to start considering, start thinking about and pushing toward. If you don't know much about trademarking or brand registry or the benefits thereof, I'll also put my video related to that below so you can see what brand registry is all about, what the requirements are and how to apply. So now we can click on next. At the top here it reads, this is for the sole owner or primary contact for this account. So here you can see an overview of your registration and you're going to need to select the ID document type or upload the requested ID document type. Often this is going to be a passport. Then you're going to need to provide any additional documents. Now these vary between situations but in this case we can provide either a bank account statement or credit card statement. Remember, this is why we wanted to make sure the earlier address that we input would line up with the document we upload here and the address on that document. So once you've uploaded these and double checked all the details of your submission here, you can click on submit. And then after this, the verification team goes to work. They're going to look at your info. They're going to verify as much as they can. They're probably going to ask you for one or two more things. They might have a few questions and they're going to reach out to you via email. So keep an eye out for them there. Now, I know a lot of you are really proactive and you want to get things ready. So if that's the case, 
In the meantime, you can prep some commonly asked for details, things like bank statements and utility bills, proving a bank account ownership or address. These are often easily downloadable from your bank. And the main thing here is make sure they're as recent as possible. They cannot be any older than three months. With Payoneer or World First or any of these online payment accounts, they also issue letters called letters of ownership. So you can ask them for those and they are used for the same purposes with Amazon, proving account ownership and address. You may also be asked for an EIN, which is an employer identification number. You can get this by heading over to the IRS website. Now these can be issued to individuals in the US, but they can also be issued to companies, whether those companies are in the US or abroad. So for example, if you're a foreign company, you can go download the document from the IRS website that matches your company's country. Then you fill out that document and what you do is you call the IRS's number and you're going to verbally give back your answers to that same document and they are going to issue your EIN over the phone. So now you are well on your way to selling on Amazon. I wanted to ask you guys to please share this video with someone you know who's interested in selling or who thinks they cannot sell because of their location. Or better yet, if you guys could share this in like groups you're a part of, like Facebook groups or Amazon seller groups, that would really get this in front of the right people. But overall here, just keep a cool head and continually provide what the verification team asks for. I know it can be really frustrating. I remember going through literally months of this, but by knowing these tactics and, and how the verification team works, I think this is really gonna streamline and just shorten your process. I hope this session helped clear things up. If it did, please smash that like button for me. And drop in, in comments, questions below. If you think I didn't cover something enough, let's discuss it below. And most importantly, let me know how your verification goes. Or if you have any verification horror stories, I would love to hear those as well. But you guys keep well, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next video.